uh, give us an overview of the status of climate action plans in the North County cities. I'd like to introduce Dwayne Dietz of the San Diego 350 Public Policy Team. I'm going to I'm going to kind of take a research view of this. The data is the plans that are already there on the websites. And I'll basically learn what I can by comparing one city's plan with another. And what I I'll just say up front, what it brought to me was a lot of questions. Because when I see things handled differently between cities, I immediately want to know, well, why, why is it different? What, what, are, what are they thinking? So it's those kinds of information that I hope to share with you. First of all, there's basically two kinds of plans. One kind is that that is looking ahead to 2020. And there are four North County cities that have done that. And then there are the other kind, more far-reaching plans, looking to 2035. And one of the plans is North County uh, Carlsbad. And then I'll use the City of San Diego's draft plan, which also goes to 2035 as a comparison, so that uh, you can kind of learn, even though there's only two cities to look at. And then finally, I'll say something about there are four cities in North County that have not uh, produced a plan, even a draft plan. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. They may have just had a different strategy of approaching the whole question. So just basically bring that out. OK, the, the bar chart here, I'm showing the four cities that have the plans up to 2020. And those, those are the four colors. And then the height of the bars, I basically took the idea from the Encinitas plan, it might have been other plans, which shows, if you just, just say blue chart to begin with, it shows kind of steps to go from this 2005 baseline, which all of these four cities use 2005 as their baseline. And then it shows things that are then further further factors, I guess. So the second from the left would be their baseline, or their business as usual, out to 2020. And then the next one is there are adjustments, basically reductions, that are actions that have been taken by either the state or the federal, or in this case, state or federal, that is going to happen even though there's no city action. Basically, it's having most to do with uh, clean vehicles and, and things that are beyond their control. So that is part of getting to their, their target, which I'll get to how they set their target. But part of it is done for them at a higher level, and all they have to do is sit and watch it happen. And so after that's taken place, then they need to go from where, the, where they are in that bar to where they want to be on the right hand set of bars, which would be their target. Now I've I've ratioed them all to what their initial 2005 baseline emissions are. So the cities are, are quite different sizes, but if you race, ratio them all to what they were, then you ended up with a unity. So they all start out together. And so that's just an overall way to scale the whole thing. And uh, the red line at 0.85 is the target for all for three out of the four cities, which is a 15% reduction out of 2020. Encinitas chose their target at 12%. Makes you ask. Why not? Well, I'm not sure I can give you an answer, but maybe you'll kind of uh, start to understand sir, understand the answers we go on. Next. Okay, th these basically are the same numbers on a spreadsheet that would have produced 
the bar charts that you just saw. And I'll just uh, start at the top, which is the publication date of the plan. Now, in all cases, these four cities, San Marcos, Escondido, and Vista, in addition to Encinitas, they have plans that are approved. They've adopted the plans. And the dates that they ad adopted them are on the top. So I've, I've listed them in order of when they adopted the plan. And it turns out this is kind of important information. So Encinitas was the first one in March of 2011. But the rules of the game were kind of changing. And they're changing because the overall objective that came from Schwarzenegger's uh, executive order was to reduce emissions relative to 1990. And then he had targets at a few different points out ending in 2050. But no one had any information about what the emissions were in 1990. So this was in 2005 that this was decided. So here's an executive order statewide to reduce emissions from a date that no one had any information. They didn't have no idea what their emissions were. So there was quite a while of kind of scurrying around at the state level. Uh, the California Air Resources Board was given the responsibility to kind of figure out what are the rules of the game given these complications. And, and basically what they decided is if you take your, your baseline at the current year, they didn't say which year, they said current year, that let, let some leeway. So well, what were they talking about? Well, it looks like 2005, that's when the executive order was made. So 2005 makes sense as a starting point. And then he gave some new uh, percentages to, to work from 2005, saying that would be effective the same as if they had 1990 data. So that's, that's what that is. And as you move to the right, that means uh, all the way to Escondido and Vista, they approved theirs two, two years later than Encinitas. So there was new information over that two-year period on how they should do their plans. And they're kind of all figuring out how to get started. Okay, the next thing, uh, Diane has already talked about, how do you define the traffic and whether uh, it's got passed through traffic or not. So Encinitas included the pass-through traffic because they didn't know any different. It was still an item of discussion. And then it was finally, uh, I guess, determined that no, they could only count the ones that either left or returned or both in their own city. So that's a little bit of a change in what the ground rules are as you move forward to the right. And then, so then their targets uh, just spelled out their 12%, 15%. So it, it could very well have been that Encinitas thought that 12% is kind of what the overall target was going to be, but they ended up with more baseline emissions because they were counting these these passenger cars and trucks and things like that to go for Encinitas. So I, I kind of will give them a pass on that. Uh, now the numbers that I'm putting up on the board, I'm doing in terms of uh, KMT, which is down in the bottom corner, it says 1,000 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. I'm the only one using this K, this 1,000 tons, and that's just to save me a bunch of extra <laughs> digits of accuracy. So I, I've made every number at least a thousand times smaller in what I'm putting up there. If you look at the, all the plans, they're going to be in the full uh, almost millions of, of tons. And uh, those numbers are going to be hard to work with. So I'm just moving on down. The, the, these are the actual numbers that showed up in the bar chart, so I'm not going to spend more time. All of these charts are available on the website, so if you want to get in there and, and actually look for specific numbers, uh, that's the way to do it. And then I show at the bottom, basically their target is the middle uh, 2020 target, and then the arrows on the left show that they really want to meet that target or do better than that, and the green means they've all met their targets or done better. So, hooray for them. 
if these month, if these numbers mean anything at all. <laughs> okay, so now then there's these major categories. We've seen a couple of bar charts where the transportation was the biggest uh, part of the pie. And so for transportation, just in the, uh, the part that the local governments, the cities primarily, can take uh, actions under their control to close that gap. That's kind of their challenge. And I've listed some of these general topics, traffic flow, telework, smart growth. Overall, they don't all use the same language. Some will say smart growth, and some don't use that term, but it could be they're doing some of the same uh, steps. And they just call it something different. So that became very difficult to figure out, are these people doing the same thing or not from other cities? And I think you actually have to study the wording pretty closely to figure out, are these similar things or are they just quite different? And this is maybe only some of the bigger ones, the, the two or three in a given city that uh, have numbers large enough to actually be the major part of their own local action program are the ones that show up on this list. Uh, I'll just say that it's kind of strange that Encinitas, its biggest number, 13.7 in transportation, telework, is not something that, that showed up big in the other cities. What See is it? It? What and you have to say, well, what is it? What is it? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what it is. It, they, they've got a paragraph that talks about it, but why isn't, why isn't there some consistent, consistency between cities? And I'm just leaving it with you that it's helpful if you realize that there's some of these peculiar differences, then you can dig into it, read it, see for yourself, and you'll learn about the topic that way. Okay, I'll go to the next one. Okay, the energy, we've already seen that that's a big part of it. So the same story is here. There's a bunch of, of uh, short titles, and we've got the various numbers. Again, these are the the biggies within the energy for each of these four cities. And they don't have much consistency between them. And then the other one is other energy at the bottom. Just collects all the miscellaneous things. Next. Solid waste. I thought this was quite interesting in the it's a pattern. It's a pattern. Most the weeks. Encinitas has a quite large number, 15.4. And it certainly isn't because they're the, the biggest city. Because these numbers are not ratios. So I'm not sure what they thought they were doing in Encinitas to be so much bigger than the other cities. Have they got some new approach or... Uh, were they not paying attention to what, say, a contractor wrote into that slide? I don't know. Next one. And this is miscellaneous local measures, and, and so these are kind of small things. But you take something like off-road equipment. One thing is I found that off-road equipment got lumped with kind of different larger categories differently for each city. So everyone is just ad hoc on how they approach the problem, what they what they think it means. Okay, next chart. Okay, this is a summary of those four categories that I mentioned, and that's just rolling up the numbers, and then you end up with the totals at the bottom. It's a little bit hard to compare here because I haven't ratioed them. Uh, kind of offline, I did a ratio on one of them, for example, uh, against population. I don't know that, that that's the best one to use. And I'll ha I happen to do it on the one where Encinitas had this uh, very much larger number for solid waste. And <laughs> it turned out when you do it by population ratio in it, it was even bigger. It just stands way out over the other ones. My guess is someone's made a mistake. It's an important mistake because it allowed them, allowed them to get to their goal. Next chart. 
Okay, I'm moving now to the 2035 set. And I'm only showing two here. I will say a little bit why I didn't include one of the cities that does go off the 2035, Escondido. I felt like it would be an embarrassment to them. <laughs> and the reason is, the only uh, improvement they got was out to the third bar, which is state and federal um, acts. They didn't add anything on out, so they basically would, would get the same answer for after local. So, so they, there was no addition, and therefore they didn't come anywhere close to the goal. Uh, the target, 49% reduction I put there as a target, which is, uh, it's the inverse, it's, the ratio is 0.51, so 0.51 means, if you think of it as percentage, 51% of the, the normalized one is what they want the target to be, but the way it's stated is the percentage of reduction, so you, you have to uh, subtract whatever that one, 51 would be from 100 and you get 49, so it's 49 percent. So it's, it's just a little bit of confusion factor that, that is included. Okay, there's a, a little bit more complication on this one. First, if you look at the baseline year, Carlsbad picked 2005 as their baseline and City of San Diego 2010. Now, that could be a very reasonable thing for San Diego City to have done in that they did it at least a year later. So maybe there was, there was more guidelines, I don't know. I do know when I look through some of the, the earlier, the rationale for sticking with 2005, it would have something like, well, we wanted to have a year before the uh, recession. It would be more representative. And if you go out to 2009, 2010, you're going to have the emissions were lower because of the emission, because of the recession. <coughs> That's one of a number of examples where it's hard to make apples to apples comparison because everything is kind of a little bit different. So I'll just assume that those two years are equivalent and maybe, maybe population grew, but the recession brought down the emissions per capita, and they actually end up being equivalent numbers, could be. But the baseline, or the, uh, the business as usual, usual, it turns out the two cities use different uh, methodology to determine business as usual. Carlsbad did their analysis as a party to a, a group the SECC is Statewide Energy Efficiency Collaborative, I think, I think it is. So that is part of the state is using their kind of set of guidelines. They actually make sense, but they're not consistent with other ways of doing it. So in the case, the biggest thing that is different is the seat business as usual baseline includes a couple of, of state and federal level actions into their business as usual number. So, the, so it's going to be a lower number than they otherwise would have had. And it happens to be something that's called Pavley 1, which is a, uh, a cleaner energy automobile kind of thing. It, it's uh, more efficiency. That was done actually, I think, in 2002 in the state to get it started or approved there. And then the federal government followed that guidance, that guidance, that uh, example, and they introduced the CAFE standards. So you've got two sets of, of laws in place that start to reduce emissions. It's cranked to the business as usual uh, in the Carlsbad case. But it's not included when you get over the next adjustment. So it basically all comes out in the wash when you get to the 2035 federal slash state slash regional. Well, regional is a new term that got, just got thrown in here. And it, well, I'll talk about this in the next chart. 
So anyway, according to these numbers, both cities met the targets. The target 49% is was suggested by Sandag and maybe guidance from the state as a, a, a reasonable target out in 2035 because there still is a lack of statewide uh, firm numbers. So they said go ahead and use that number. And I think that they both follow that kind of guidance from above. Okay, so again, here's the spreadsheet version of that uh, set of charts. So Carlsbad approved theirs March 14. Approved. This is only a draft. Both of these are only a draft. So they, they're not really approved, but that's when they made them public, put them on their website, asked for public comments. So that's kind of a, a key kind of way. Uh, Carlsbad did not include the pass-through trips. Uh, I wasn't able to find in reading it whether uh, City of San Diego did or not. Uh, I could have called Nicole and find out if she would have told me the answer, but I wanted to stick to my ground rules of only looking at the website material that's put out there that uh, at least I could find. Okay, if you go to the oh, maybe uh, two thirds of the way down, it says seat adjusted 2035 baseline estimate. Well, I put City of San Diego is not applicable, applicable because they were using a different set of business as usual guidelines. Uh, let's say the different set, uh, it would be the one that Epic recommends is the one that kind of the other ones are using. And Carlsbad did not have Epic as their contractor. And therefore, it, it came flowing through another system of methodology. Uh, local responsibility, it turns out, oh, no, I'll back up. Fed, state, and region. It's the region word that got added to that. Carlsbad determined that it was not, uh, it was a separate program outside of the climate action planning. And so they did not subtract what they, let's say, were allowed to do, which is kind of surprising. But City of San Diego did. So I don't know whether that's a legitimate difference of opinion, maybe from legal advice, on whether that should be used or not. But it just came in at this point of looking at all this stuff. And then uh, they both met their goal, according to that's the green at the bottom. Okay, let's go on to the next step. This is just looking at the federal state region to show some of these uh, these differences where it's even difficult to compare one city from the other. And on the utility efficiency programs as an example that City of San Diego used, uh, actually my understanding is that the ability to do that did not get uh, announced to the cities prior to Carlsbad putting its draft plan up on the website. So maybe they had an opportunity to go back and adjust it for this additional advantage, or maybe they uh, didn't think about it, I don't know. And uh, so I'll just, I won't spend any more time on the numbers. Next one. The top local measures, this is the biggie. You've already heard about the community choice City of San Diego, 74% of its local action is by this one program, Community Choice. So that, that by, and, by and large was really a biggie in helping them uh, meet their targets. Whereas Carlsbad had several different smaller things that, that they say are the contributors to it. Okay, now I'll move to the cities that don't have caps on the web to be reviewed. Uh, Del Mar, I don't really know where they stand. There's just nothing on this topic on their website. Oceanside, they've done uh, inventories, but they haven't actually come out with a draft plan that can be looked at. Poway, uh, there's really nothing on their website. 
Long Beach, I think that they've done quite a lot uh, in the spirit of what these plans are asking for. They've had workshops for whatever their reasons are. They've chosen not to put it in this package and call it a climate action plan draft. I think we can learn from what their thoughts are. And next one. Okay, that's just uh, some events that occurred leading up to their workshop and things like that in the past. And a link there that you can get that information. Next. Okay, now this is in your handout. It's just an overall summary of, of these, these cities that I've covered. Plus San Diego County. San Diego County is, is kind of different than what we think. It's really the unincorporated, unincorporated part of San Diego County. So it, it's not covering individual cities when they unincorporated. But again, it has been, and I'll get to the next thing. Next chart. These checks just mean it looks like there's something in your plan where these descriptors over on the left look like they line up. This itself is, is difficult because a short phrase doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for different cities. So it may look like it means the same thing. It, it may not really. Okay, and this last chart, this is the status of kind of climate action plans. And it's a status in terms of, uh, well, they're all grouped for those that are only looking at 2020 on the top of the page. And it's telling you like the date that it was adopted or if it's updated. There's one that I, I show as updated, which is Encinitas. But when I looked at the update, it looked like they did not look at it. Every single number was exactly the same as the original one uh, two years earlier. So, they didn't, they, they had to have just rubber stamped whatever was there. And uh, the main thing, there's some dates on the litigation that went on with the San Diego County plan, and finally when it was rescinded by the Board of Supervisors, which, hooray! Yeah. And start over again. <laughs> so anyway, that last part is in your handout, as I said. When you break into the different sessions, it, it may be with something that you can kind of use a little bit in guiding your discussion. But if you really need any of these other stuff, you'll have to go online to the website. Okay. Uh, thank you, Julian. Um.